Today is the fourth Sunday after Easter. Epistle of St. James the Apostle. Dear beloved, every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. For of his own will hath he begotten us by the word of truth, that we might be some beginning of his creature. You know, my dearest brethren, and let every man be swift to hear, but slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. Wherefore, casting away all uncleanness, and abundance of naughtiness, with meekness receive the encrafted word, which is able to save your souls. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I go to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow hath filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is expedient to you that I go, for if I go not, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will convince the world of sin, and of justice, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me. And of justice, because I go to the Father, and you shall see me no longer. And of judgment, because the prince of this world is already judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will teach you all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but what things soever he shall hear, he shall speak. And the things that are to come, he shall show you. He shall glorify me, because he shall receive a mine, and shall show it to you. Be seated. We'll begin it up with them. All right, Maria, for heaven assistance. Our Maria, your Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Our Maria, grace to play in our domains, take them. Benedicta Toribus. Benedictus fructus ventis tu, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis sanctoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostri. Amen. On the second Sunday of May, the month of Our Lady, we'll do a little Mother's Day story. A story that both the Blessed Mother in Heaven and his earthly mother helped his vocation. In County Mayo, Ireland, Father John Payton married Mary Gillard in 1899. Patrick Payton was born on January 9, 1909, and was the sixth of nine children. Now, Patrick's father was about 42 years old at the time of Patrick's birth and was already stricken with poor health. He was baptized on January 10, 1909. The family grew up working on a farm and praying the rosary every night. John Payton, Patrick's father's dominant quality was his spirit of faith and he practiced his faith each night by kneeling and leading the family in the rosary. Patrick's grandparents, Robert and Gitty, Kitty Gillard, Patrick lived with his grandparents twice in his life before the age of nine. And again, Patrick had this wonderful, strong faith ex example in, his, in, this, in doing this, as they knelt together as a family when he visited them twice and prayed the rosary nightly. Another instance, 
there was a farmer from a nearby village who needed help picking potatoes. And while staying with them, Patrick realized that this family was, is different than his, as there's no deep faith and no family rosary. Patrick decided to share his love for Mary and the family rosary with this family, his neighbors, and they began to pray the rosary after, every night after that experience. John Barrett, one of Patrick's friends at, an age, at the age of nine, arranged for him to serve Holy Mass. Now this was a high honor for, in his parish, and Patrick's desire was then to become a priest from, from that day on. From age 9 to age 17, Patrick's desire to become a priest grew with each retreat and talk given at St. Joseph Parish at Atimus. However, his applications to the seminary were rejected and re refocuses on her career. For example, in Renebris, these priests were the first to suggest the priesthood to Patrick. The Capuchins, Patrick believed that this was the community for him, so he wrote a letter to them. However, he never heard from them and he felt rejected. And the Society of African Mission, Missionaries, this his parish priest thought that maybe Patrick could get a scholarship to go, but he was rejected again. And with the quote, we are sorry, but Patrick is not up to the required standard in mathematics. After these rejections, Patrick decided against what seemed to be a foolish dream of becoming a priest and focuses on becoming a millionaire in America. In 1927, at age 18, Patrick decided that he wanted to sell his real estate in the United States to become a millionaire. He already had family members in America, three sisters, three uncles, and other relatives settled in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Acquiring their father's consent was a difficult part of his journey. His father agreed that he and his brother Tom could make the trip to America and live with, with their sister and one, on one, with one condition. He said, go down on your knees and make me a promise here before the picture of the Sacred Heart. From now on, there will be nobody but yourself to advise you and decide for you. But your first responsibility will always be to save your soul. And so I want you to promise to be faithful to our Lord in America. And so young Patrick was determined to make his fortune in the United States. When he arrived, he was greeted by their, by their sister, Nellie, and Patrick and Tom were mesmerized by Scranton, then called the Electric City. Nellie set up a meeting with Monsignor Kelly, which Patrick declined. For weeks, Patrick searched without success for employment. And Senior Kelly, tracked him down and offered him a job as a sexton or janitor in the cathedral, and he accepted the job. Finally, while working on, in the cathedral, with the silence, the peace, and the joy of talking to our Lord and our Blessed Mother, Patrick experiences a sense of being at home and a place of happiness. His dream of becoming a missionary priest is awakened in a new land, the land of America. However, Patrick's dream is challenged again by his lack of education, so he enrolled as Saint Thomas at St. Thomas High School. And his brother Tom also makes the decision to become a priest, and Monsignor Kelly helps them both. In the spring of 1929, Holy Cross priest from Notre Dame, Indiana, visited Patrick's new parish in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Their preaching and presence spurred Patrick to realize and express a desire to become a missionary with, the Holy, with Holy Cross. During this visit, he approached Father Pat Dolan, Congregation of the Holy Cross, and said, I want to join Holy Cross. And Senior Kelly wrote a letter of recommendation stating, I envy the community or the bishop that finally gets him. 
With great joy, in 1929, Patrick and Tom, his brother, entered Holy Cross Minor Seminary at the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. In June 1932, sorry, 1932, at the age of 23, Patrick and his brother Tom graduated and became the novitiate at Holy Cross, began the novitiate at Holy Cross. And this was an intensive year of spiritual exercises that included living with and learning about the congregation of Holy Cross. They professed their temporary vows with Holy Cross in 1933 with the Holy Cross and started studying for a Bachelor of Arts at the University of Notre Dame. After completing their bachelor degrees, Patrick with honors in 1937, the Peyton brothers began theological training at Holy Cross College on the campus of the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. In addition to theolo theology and canon law, Patrick also acquired knowledge that would benefit him as a missionary. He lived with seminarians who were also preparing for the missions at the house called the Bengalese, while Thomas lived at Holy Cross College as he planned to serve in the United States. Patrick's often denied dream to be a missionary priest was now seemingly within reach. In October 1938, Patrick's health began to deteriorate and he was diagnosed with advanced tuber tuber tuberculos tuberculosis in November. His condition, grew, his condition grew progressively worse and in October 1939, the doctors offered Patrick two options for his sickness. Either a risky surgery with little hope for, for success or simply to pray. Father Cornelius Haggerty of the Holy Cross visits and describes a passage from St. Paul stating that faith is transmitted from mother to son. And Father Cornelius Haggerty said, You have the faith, Patrick, but you are not using it. You brought it with you from Ireland. Your mother gave it to you just as her mother had given it to her. Patrick's Auntie Annie shared with Patrick with these words, Your mother's constant prayer was that your sufferings would come upon her, that you would get well and go back to your work. End of quote. And Father Haggerty spoke of Mary, our Blessed Mother's intercession. Quote, What she asks for and insists on, she obtains. She has never failed anyone who had recourse to her with faith and perseverance." End of quote. Another quotation, Since you have your faith, why don't you use it? And so Patrick did what his former mentor suggested and prayed to Mary, our Blessed Mother, for a cure. And on October 31st, 1939, he knew in his heart that he had been cured. His depression, darkness, and feeling of loneliness was replaced by lightness, freedom, and hope. Patrick saw Our Lady in a new light. How human, approachable, and sensitive she is to our needs. He said, when I, when I needed her and her power, and her friendship, she did not forget that ever since I had been a little child and could open my mouth, I had used that power to say the rosary. So when I needed her friendship, she was glad to give it to me. Patrick returns from the brink of death and was ordained with his brother Tom and other classmates on June 15, 1941 at Sacred Heart Church at the University of Notre Dame. Quote from him, That day I gave my heart and soul in love to Mary. 
Patrick's first assignment was at Albany, New York. Father Pathan was certain that his return to health had come about for a spe specific purpose, namely to foster devotion to Mary. But the question remained of how to achieve this goal. His first assignment was as chaplain to a group of Holy Cross brothers who taught at the Vicentian, Vicentian Institute in Albany, New York. Father Peyton dutifully fulfilled his commitments as chaplain to the brothers, and it was in this time that a dream of establishing the family rosary in the homes of 10 million people began to take shape. Father Patrick began the Family Rosary Crusade, giving volunteer students and brothers and sisters from Vicentian Institute to assist him writing letters to bishops, asking their help to organize a rosary campaign. And his first major rally was in Canada. In 1948, after a provincial meeting with priests in Canada, Father Peyton was invited by Bishop, Bishop John T. Kidd in London, of London, Ontario, in Canada, to hold a rally about family prayer. This was the first of 540 rallies worldwide led by Father Patrick Payton in his life. The rally in Canada was a huge success, where over 80,000 families, 95% of the diocese, pledged to faithfully pray the family rosary. Father Payton had made the first in inroads in his original plan to bring the family rosary to 10 million families. And here's a, just a short summary of his, what happened in his life. In North America, 1961, <clears throat> San Francisco, California, 500,000 people attended his rally. In Latin America from 1962 to 1964. In Colombia, one million attended. In Rio, Brazil, 1.5 million attended. In Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil, two million attended. In Europe, 19, between 1951 and 1966, England, altogether, 833,500 attended his rallies. In Ireland, 310,000 attended. In Spain, 2,554,000 attended. Africa, 1955. In Tanzania, 123,000 attended. In Uganda, 130,000 attended. In Kenya, 55,000. South Africa, 187,000. In Asia, between the years 1955 and 1985, here's a summary. The Philippines, altogether, 2 million attended. In Thailand, 1,000. In Singapore, 20,000. The message Father Payton wanted to share at these rallies was simple. Family unity through family prayer and his popular slogan still inspire families throughout the world today. The two slogans are the family that prays together stays together. And the other one, a world at prayer is a world at peace. And finally a summary of his final days on earth. In spite of Father Peyton's passion and extraordinary energy which he expended in traveling, speaking, organizing, and planning for the growth and expansion of his ministry in the 1990s, his health began to fail. His heart grew, grew weaker and his, he was hospitalized three times for con congestive heart failure. He went to live with the Little Sisters of the Poor in San San Pedro, California, where he spent his days in adoration, offering Mass, and praying the Rosary. After a few months of failing health, his life began to slowly ebb away. 
On the evening of June 2nd, 1992, he was unable to finish the ro his rosary and was told by those at his bedside that they would finish the prayer for him. He died peacefully at 5.20 a.m. on June the 3rd, 1992. His final words were, My Mary, my Queen, my Mother. Father Payton was buried on June 8th, 1992 in Holy Cross Com Community Cemetery at Stonehill College in Northeastern Massachusetts. While he lived, Father Payton's prayers and healing touched, touch, he assisted many in their needs. And since his death, many reports of favors received through his intercession have been noted. Some report physical he healings, others tell of spiritual favors received, a special mention of reports of, of alienated Catholics returning to the sacraments and of families finding hope and courage in suffering. And many commented on how quickly their prayers were answered when praying to Father Peyton. Father Peyton, in his life, after his commitment to Mary, was never without a rosary. At the request of the Congregation of Holy Cross, the religious community to which Father Payton belonged, the Bishop of Fall River, Massachusetts, with the approval of the Vatican, officially opened the cause of canonization on June 1, 2001. Let this little story on Mother's Day help all of us to spread devotion to Our Lady through the family rosary. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.